Um, how are you going, Dad? I'm, uh, I'm doing good, mate. Um, I mean, I spend most of my life um, in this room working anyway, so it ain't been an enormous change for me, but of course it has for vast numbers of other people. And um, what I want to talk about today is um, how this scam has been played. You know, we've been observing events and it's very clear to anyone, especially someone who's spent the last uh, 30 years investigating this, that this virus is an excuse, a problem reaction solution to create the very um, Orwellian global society that I've been warning was coming if we didn't wake up. A lot of people may have not um, heard me say that because um, they were drowned by the laughter but I don't think um, they will be laughing so much now. And um, I want to start with a brilliant explanation of how this coronavirus scam, because that's what it is when you look at the evidence, um, has been created and is being played out. First of all, if you go to davidlag.com, uh, you will see uh, an, an article Basically, what you're looking for in the uh, search engine is 12 health experts uh, talk about coronavirus. And these are people who are experts in their field, who have broken ranks from the narrative and basically said, this is insane and this is uh, nonsense, what is being imposed upon the world for a virus that is nothing like as deadly as they're claiming, and we'll get into why that is as we go along. But here's just one quote, Gaz, from uh, one of those 12, Professor Dr. Sukarit Bakhti, highly acclaimed infectious uh, medicine specialist in Germany. And uh, he says of these lockdowns, which the last time I saw, now involve three billion people in the world. And you know, just very quickly, when, I've been saying all these years that a few people control human society. People have said, oh no, that's mad, you're crazy. That would never happen, that could never happen. We have just watched the human race give away its world and its society, its freedom in a matter of days. Not only can it be possible for a few to control the world if the vast majority don't question anything, it's a doddle. So this is what uh, Professor uh, Dr. Bakhti said about these lockdowns. They are grotesque, absurd, and very dangerous. All these measures are leading to self-destruction and collective suicide, wait for it, because of nothing but a spook. So the next question is, how does the spook work? And uh, as you know, um, this very morning, Gaz, um, we were sent uh, an email by Sir Julian Rose. Julian Rose is a researcher and writer and very famous in Britain for the promotion of organic farming. And um, I just want to read you this because it uh, relates to something that he was sent from a medical profession in America, a medical professional, uh, who is explaining how the scam has been played. It is a brilliant explanation. Um, uh, it's not short. But it is devastating, so stick um, with me. Um, Julian says, um, the below was sent to me by a widely respected professional scientist in um, USA. While we may know it's a scam, this insider evidence on the methodology of the madness is second to none, and it is. The writer prefers to stay anonymous because presenting any narrative different from the official one can cause you a lot of stress in the toxic environment caused by the scam which surrounds COVID-19 these days. So this is what this professional scientist um, sent to Julian. I work in the healthcare field. Here's the problem. We are testing people for any strain of 
a coronavirus, not specifically for COVID-19. There are no reliable tests for a specific COVID-19 virus. There are no reliable agencies or media outlets for reporting numbers of actual COVID-19 virus cases. This needs to be addressed first and foremost. Every action and reaction to COVID-19 is based on totally flawed data and we simply cannot make accurate assessments. So where are they coming from? I'll come to that as we go along in this video cast. This is why you're hearing that most people with COVID-19 are showing nothing more than cold flu-like symptoms. That's because most coronavirus strains are nothing more than cold flu-like symptoms. The few actual novel um, coronavirus cases do have some worse respiratory responses, but still have a very promising recovery rate, especially for those without prior issues, something we've clearly seen all over the world. The gold standard in testing for COVID-19 is laboratory isolated purified coronavirus particles free from any contaminants and particles that look like viruses but are not that have been proven to be the cause of a syndrome known as COVID-19 and obtained by using proper viral uh, isolation methods and controls. Not the PCR test that is currently being used or serology antibody tests which do not detect viruses as such. This is the test, the PCR, that people say, oh, we need more testing. On our website, John Rappaport, an American journalist who's specialized in health issues and um, uncovering big pharma scandals, has written about this and the fact this PCR test is, um, is useless and flawed. And here we have a scientist in America confirming that. So, PCR basically takes a sample of your cells and amplifies any DNA to look for viral sequences, i.e. bits of non-human DNA that seem to match parts of a known viral genome. The problem is the test is known not to work. It uses amplification which means taking a very, very tiny amount of DNA and growing it um, exponentially until it can be analyzed. Obviously, um, any minute contaminations in the sample will also be amplified, leading to potentially gross errors of discovery. Additionally, it's not only looking for partial viral sequences, um, not um, whole genomes, um, or it is looking for partial viral sequences, not whole genomes. So identifying a single pathogen is next to impossible, even if you ignore the other issues. This, these are the tests that are being promoted to sell the figures. The Mickey Mouse test this scientist says, the Mickey Mouse test kits being sent out to hospitals at best uh, tell analysts you have some viral DNA in your cells, which most of us do most of the time. It may tell you the viral sequences related to a specific type of virus, say the huge family of coronavirus, but that's all. The idea these kits can isolate a specific virus like COVID-19 is nonsense. And that's not even getting into the other issue, viral load. If you remember, the PCR works by amplifying minute amounts of DNA. It therefore is useless at telling you how much virus you may have. 
And that's the only question that really matters when it comes to diagnosing illness. Everyone will have a few virus kicking around in their system at any time, and most will not cause illness because their quantities are too small. For a virus to sicken you, you need lots of it, a massive amount of it. But PCR does not test viral load and therefore can't determine if an osteogenesis is present, uh, present in sufficient quantities to sicken you. In other words, people are um, being diagnosed with coronavirus when the test does not allow that virus to be isolated to make that diagnosis. And not on a level that can um, determine if you have enough of the virus to have any effect on your health. So where are these figures coming from? I'll come to that as we go along. If you feel sick and get a PCR test, any random virus DNA might be identified even if they uh, aren't at all involved in your sickness, which leads to false diagnosis. And what they're doing all over the world is if you um, die of some kind of respiratory um, effect and you um, and you have all these other um, challenges to your, your immune system, what they call, um, you know, um, other health problems, then as long as you test for coronavirus in the ludicrous uh, methodology that this scientist is describing, you go on the figures as having died of coronavirus. And coronavirus, the scientist goes on, are incredibly common. A large percentage of the world human population will have COVID DNA in them in small quantities, even if they are perfectly well or sick with some other pathogen. Do you see where this is going yet? The question is asked. If you want to create a totally false panic about a totally false pandemic, pick a coronavirus. Which is what the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the 1% um, front, the World Economic Forum and the Johns Hopkins University operation in America chose as the subject of their event 201, six weeks before this virus came to light, when they ran a simulation of um, what would happen and how the world would respond to a pandemic. And what did they choose? A corona virus. Uh, just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. Um, he talks about these, um, coronaviruses, uh, or he or she, um, they are incredibly common and there's tons of them. A very high percentage of people who have become sick by other means, flu, bacterial pneumonia, anything, will have a positive PCR test for COVID, even if you're doing them properly and ruling out contamination, simply because COVIDs are so common. There are hundreds of thousands of flu and pneumonia victims in hospital um, throughout the world at any one time. All you need to do is select the sickest of these in a single location, say Wuhan, administer PCR tests to them and claim anyone showing viral sequences similar to a coronavirus, which will inevitably be quite a few is suffering from a new disease. Since you already selected the sickest flu cases, a fairly high proportion of your sample will go on to die. You can then say this new virus as a fatality rate higher than the flu and use this to infuse more concern and do more tests, which will of course produce more cases which expands the testing, which produces yet more cases, and so on 
and so on. Before long, you have your pandemic. And all you have done is use a simple test uh, kit trick to convert the worst flu and pneumonia cases into something new that doesn't actually exist. Now just run the same scam in other countries, making sure to keep the fear message running high so that people will feel panicky and less able to think critically. Your only problem is going to be that due to the fact that there is no actual new deadly pathogen, but just regular sick people, you are mislabeling your case numbers and especially your deaths, and they're going to be uh, your deaths way too low for a real new deadly virus pandemic, which is what we're seeing. But you can stop people pointing this out in several ways. One, you can claim this is just the beginning and more deaths are imminent. Yeah. Hello. Use this as an excuse to quarantine everyone and then claim the quarantine prevented the expected millions of dead. Wait for that one. That's coming. You, you can tell people that minimizing the dangers is irresponsible and bully them into not talking about numbers. As you see, they've bullied us. You can talk crap about made up numbers hoping to blind people with pseudoscience. See the advisors to governments around the world, not least in Britain and the United States. You can start testing well people who, of course, will also likely have shreds of coronavirus DNA in them and thus inflate your case figures with no symptom carriers. You will, of course, have to spin that to sound deadly, even though any virologist knows the more symptomless cases you have, the less deadly is your pathogen. Come to that as we go along. Take these four simple steps and you can have your own entirely manufactured pandemic up and running in weeks. They cannot confirm something for which there is no accurate test. So that is a brilliant description of what has happened and how three billion currently, and that's not the end of it, are basically under house arrest on the basis of a total scam, which has terrified people into being acquiescent to this tyranny or cult, as I call it, the borderless cult that operates all around the world, pushing this agenda for total global Orwellian control, which of course this a virus has given them the excuse to do literally globally. I think Julian's friend is just like you, like you said, he's absolutely nailed it. And we've been speaking quite a bit over the last few days um, about the fear and how these things are just being fed out and and it's it's insane here and i'm in derbyshire and um i've got friends in a village literally just over over the hills a lovely village and and he was saying that people are so frightened that they're grassing up their neighbors because they were they've been out twice you know it's like someone's gone yeah. out and some he said one of his friends has gone out and done some gardening and then he went out again to do some gardening a bit later on because you're just trying to kill time because you're so bored and, um, and yeah, one of his neighbors grasped him up. Some people came around and were like, you know, what, what, what do you think you're doing? It's like, yeah, yeah. What well, is happening? See, the, thing, the thing is that these laws that have been passed, that have suspended democracy, suspended parliament basically, uh, this week, um, are exactly the laws and impositions that I said was coming for so long um, that this cult wants to introduce. And of course, it's done so as a result of this. And, and parliament is pathetic. I mean, you know, just pathetic. So um, we um, always have a situation where if you give authority power, it will, it will just abuse it. So uh, you have a situation where people are being uh, tracked by drones in Britain when they're out walking in the middle of nowhere in the countryside with not another human being anywhere near them. So you can get in your car near nobody, 
you drive to a spot in the middle of nowhere, no one else in the car, you walk where there is nobody, and the drones come in and say, you've got to uh, go home. This is not essential um, activity. Um, so it's nothing to do with protecting people from this virus because someone walking in the countryside through that sequence I've described is not being a threat to anybody. It's not about health. It's about two things. It's about a control and it's about destroying the global economy and taking people's livelihoods away, their independence away, um, so that they become totally dependent on the state. And if they don't do um, what the state demands, then the state will withdraw what will be pathetic support. But I just want to come here, Gaz, because, okay, we've been through the explanation of how the scam works. So where do the numbers come from? And you know, we see Boris Johnson, for instance, who stands up at these daily news conferences and say, we've decided, he hasn't decided to do anything. This is being driven, not even by elected politicians, they're pawns in a game they don't understand. It's being driven by the dark suits and the experts, the technocrats, on the way to a technocratic society where, where um, there are no elected politicians anymore, only dark suit bureaucrats and uh, medical experts and financial experts and all this other stuff, engineers and scientists dictating everything via um, AI. So where are these numbers coming from? Where, this is a key question, where are the lockdown policies coming from that have suspended freedom in Britain on a colossal scale and have destroyed the economy in a way it will never in any kind of time scale imaginable recover? Well, they're coming from the advisors. And of course, as always, the mainstream media, oh, medical advisor says this, oh, advisor says that. There's no question, well, hold on a minute. Who are these advisors? What is their agenda? Where are they getting their information from to, to uh, lead to these lockdown policies? Because they're the ones driving them. Well, here's a story. I mean, it is pathetic especially when you've, you've heard what I've just said. Coronavirus, UK lockdown could be indefinite until a vaccine is found. Of course, the vaccine, everyone must be vaccine, mandatory, save the world, and what's in the vaccine. UK lockdown could be indefinite unless a vaccine is found, warned scientists advising the government. So mainstream media, are you going to ask who these characters are and what their background is? Oh, no. They come from an organization called the Imperial College, which, by the way, has big connections to Freemasonry. The UK could face indefinite lockdown without a vaccine, uh, uh, scientists have warned. Um, their modeling of this is a point. Now we come to where these figures and projections are coming from. Remember what the scientists said about, um, tell them when you haven't got the figures, tell them, uh, uh, or worse is to come. They're coming from computer models run by these characters at Imperial College, just as um, the figures are being compiled in America by Johns Hopkins uh, University Medical Operation, the very organization that took part in the simulation with Gates and the 1% of a coronavirus pandemic six weeks before it became public. Who are these people? you journalists, for goodness sake. You know, uh, journalists, what do they do? They ask questions, they question everything. If these people in the mainstream media are putting journalists on their tax form, they ought to be prosecuted under the Trades Descriptions Act because it's the last thing they are. They're modeling shit in the computer, processed, shit out, 
You want to get an outcome that suits your agenda. You just control the data that goes in. This is what's happened with um, so-called human caused climate change. That's why the, um, the ice caps are still with us when they should have been long gone. It's why they're not swimming in New York from sea rising. Because the computer models that, that have driven that ludicrous policy of human caused climate change were shit in, shit out. It's a doddle to do. So anyway, their modeling of how the disease could sweep through the country, kill more than 250,000 Britons and overwhelm the National Health Service, forced Boris Johnson's change intact this week. Hello, exactly what is going on. The scientists from Imperial College London's Center for Global Infectious Disease said the world was now in uncharted territory. How do they know? Well, our computer models said. With the strict measures on limiting social contacts and quarantining households, only able to buy time rather than stop the virus spreading. Their modeling for the government, which has been shared with France and the United States, shit in, shit out, and then spread the shit, was based on new information from Italy. We can get into that as we go along. The data showed around 30% of Britons could end up needing intensive care. I have a word for that, Imperial College. Well, I've got two. Utter bollocks. And um, meaning the National Health Service would be overwhelmed by the start of April. Ultimately, around 260,000 people could have died without the government's new measures today. So, you're Boris Johnson. You don't really want to do this, not uh, least because it's going to destroy your uh, prime ministerial reign and destroy the economy. But you've got these characters saying to you, this is what's going to happen if you don't do what we say and you're going to be blamed for all these deaths. So what does he do? Well, he goes with it. This is what's going on. And this is why, people, you're sitting in your fricking houses under house arrest. But despite the government steps, the scientists warned there would be no end in sight for the world without a vaccine. Oh, here we go. They said countries would have to go through repeated cycles of restrictions being lifted and reimposed. Well, that's what the, the cult wants to do. How do you know that? Imperial College. Our computer model says so. And who put the information in? Well, we did. Professor Neil Ferguson, by the way, this is a name I will not be forgetting when this is over. Professor Neil Ferguson, Professor of Mathematical Biology, whatever the bloody hell that is, said the government had wrestled with the idea of adopting strict measures and then going back to normal. He said, we don't think that is now possible. Well, Mr. Ferguson, some of us think it is. And to put, Gaz, this whole thing into context, why, while this crap is coming out of computer models, I was sent um, a link this week, as you know, to a page on the government's official website where all the government departments and all the government guidance and advice is there in its various departments. And um, a friend of mine was looking through, uh, looking for coronavirus information, and she found this page. And this was um, on the page of this official government website um, relating to government guidance for, quote, high consequence infectious diseases, which are known as HCID. This is what this official government website page said about COVID-19. As of 19 March 2020, COVID-19 is, wait for it, 
no longer considered to be a high consequence infectious disease, HCID, in the UK. What happened days later after that pronouncement? Boris Johnson announced the deletion of freedom in Britain and the creation of a police military, you'll see, state, based on the fact that this virus, which according to this government guidance, no longer is considered to be a high consequence infectious disease, but the lockdowns happen because this is all so dangerous, you're all going to die. And it goes on. The Four Nations Public Health HCID group made an interim recommendation in January 2020 to classify COVID-19 as an HCID. This was based on consideration of the UK HCID criteria about the virus and the disease with information available during the early stages of the outbreak. Now that more is known about COVID-19, remember this is from March 19, the public health bodies in the UK have reviewed the most up-to-date information about COVID-19 against the UK HCID criteria. They have determined that several features have now changed. In particular, more information is available about mortality rates, brackets low overall, and there is now greater clinical awareness and a specific and sensitive laboratory test uh, the availability of which continues to increase. The Advisory Committee on Dangerous Pathogens is also of the opinion that COVID-19 should no longer be classified as a high consequence infectious disease. Days later, Britain was locked down because the virus is so dangerous. So, this is what we are um, looking at. You ha have our being scammed people on a monumental scale. And please don't fall for the fact or the belief that they wouldn't do that. What did Hitler and the Nazis say? The bigger the lie, the more we'll believe it. There's, there's so many things out there. Um, a few things I've seen the last couple of days, actually, um, where there's obviously a concerted effort to, to ramp up the fear because that's, that's basically what's allowing this to happen. Um, one of them, um, I don't know if you saw it, Dad, but on social media, there were lots of photos of um, Italian um, nurses and doctors and they'd obviously had the masks on all day. So they were bruised you know, badly from having these masks on all day and they shared their photos. And then all the media outlets then took the photos and put them out there, you know, look how horrific it is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw a few people had gone back and taken the original photos that these people had put on social media. And they'd been photoshopped by the media outlets to make it look even more horrific. And they had more cuts and bruises and things like that. And you just think, why are you lying? Why are you lying? Do, do you know what I mean? Well, it, it, well the journalist, Gaz, um, I, I was in the mainstream media journalist um, arena for a long time, way, way back. Thank you, God. Um, and uh, they're overwhelmingly, there are some very mature and very good journalists, but they're very rare. Most of them are little boys and girls in short trousers. And um, the editorial control, editor, etc., and above him, owners, executives, will decide on the angle, the line. And the journalists then leave or sit at their um, computers and they angle the stories according to the line they've been given. And if they don't, well, they don't stay there very long. And um, I mean, you know, I, I've seen even in, in the old days uh, where an editor would tell a journalist what the angle of the story was before the journalist even left the frickin' building to investigate the story. This is what goes on. And of course, um, you have, um, backbone deleted uh, jellyfish um, people in journalism who just think about the 
check at the end of the month and not about actually being a, a, a proper um, journalist. And fear is the currency of control. And therefore you want people in fear because then they will give their freedom away to anyone they think and to any draconian level of imposition they think will protect them from what they've been manipulated um, to fear. And there's another angle to this, which kind of goes into uh, what that scientist in America said as he, they described the scam. And that's um, numbers. There was a, um, a study published this week by Oxford University, which was looking at the coronavirus numbers and concluded that this coronavirus that is claimed was um, circulating in Britain in early January, quote, at the latest. Now you go back two weeks or three weeks from early January, and what do you hit? The very period that you and me had um, went down with an illness that had every single symptom of this virus. Um, now, because this, the symptoms are so similar across these coronavirus uh, uh, strains, um, it could have been this one or it could have been another one, but the, the, the fact is that people were getting ill in exactly this way. And of course, as we made this public, uh, other people have come forward and said, yeah, I, I, it was the same for me just before Christmas. Now, this is very, very significant and it's beginning to become clear for other reasons which I'll come to. The World Health Organization and this, this man you wouldn't trust to sell you a new car, let alone a used one, Ted Ross, who's the, the head of, of official head, figurehead of the World Health Organization. He came out and, and, and started using a figure, I think it was 3.4% of people who got this virus um, died. That figure was insane, pulled out of the air to terrify people. Um, and, you know, very simply, when people die, and for other reasons, not necessarily of the coronavirus, but that goes on the, um, that goes on the death certificate, but when people die, you have a specific number because they are no longer alive. But the, the ratio percentage rate of infections to death require another figure, which is how many have had the virus. And the bigger that figure is, the smaller the percentage of death rate to cases um, squeezes and squeezes and squeezes. And um, it's now being realized that a far greater number of people um, have this COVID-19 absolutely not in levels that are going to cause them any harm. But like the scientists said, you know, we've got loads of these coronaviruses um, in us. And therefore, we have tremendous discrepancy in the death rate because the death rate percentage depends on how many you have assessed to have actually had the virus um, or, or, or are carrying the virus and it's not caused them anything more than no symptoms or mild symptoms, which is the vast majority. We've shut down the world economy and put people under a house arrest for this. So, this explains um, something that is bewildering the the modelers and so many of the people who claim to be health experts relating to Germany and why Germany's death rate to cases is so low and much lower anywhere else. Why, why is that? How can that be? Very simple. I've just explained it. Um, this is a story um, from the last couple of days. Coronavirus. Why is Germany's death toll so low? Germany is the fifth most affected country in the world in terms of confirmed cases of coronavirus, i.e. people carrying the coronavirus, which um, almost everyone does. 
As of Thursday, 26th of March, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Europe's largest economy stood at 39,502. Yet despite tens of thousands of cases, Germany so far has reported 222 deaths from the virus, dramatically lower than the more than 7,500 in Italy and around 4,000 in Spain. This low fatality rate of 0.56%, less than regular flu, has attracted global attention and debate. Ooh, what could be going on? Well, it's bloody obvious, actually. Christian Drosten, Institute of uh, Virology Director at a Berlin hospital, said that the low death toll from coronavirus in Germany is mainly down to extensive testing. The more widely you test, the more people carrying the coronavirus, but not in any levels that's gonna cause them a problem, you get, so your case numbers expand which makes your death numbers get smaller and smaller as a ratio of the cases. He said the reason why um, we have so few deaths compared by the number of infected people is because we do a lot of laboratory diagnostics. Um, over half a million coronavirus tests are currently being carried out every week. And the article says, making direct comparisons between national mortality rates can be misleading, not just because of recording lags and different methodologies on reporting cases and deaths, but because of the extent of testing. The more aggressively a country tests for coronavirus, the more cases of mild infections will be found and recorded in the statistics, which pushes the fatality percentage down. Hello? Oh, I never had that in my computer model. But it's, it, that's, it's quote, that's just obvious, isn't it? Obvious. But here's a quote, Gaz, from Italy's civil protection chief, Angelo Borelli, who said about Italy, it is credible to estimate that there are 10 positive cases for every one officially reported. And as this article says, if this is true, and it almost certainly is because of the coronavirus that almost everyone's carrying. If this were true, and as many as 640,000 people are infected in Italy, and their actual mortality rate would, in a stroke, become 1% instead of the currently alleged 10%. You cannot give out a death rate percentage if you do not know how many people have actually got it exactly exactly in the and uk so is the vast majority vast overwhelming majority getting vaster the more people who are identified of people have no effects or mild effects from this virus and we're shutting down the world economy and putting people under house arrest as a result exactly most people don't even know they've got it and the thing in the uk unless you're a celebrity it appears you're only tested if you're hospitalized. Well, yeah. and then obviously then the percentage of deaths is taken from the percentage of people that are hospitalized. But if you're hospitalized, what of the better phrase, you're sort of, you're already buggered anyway. That's why you're at the hospital. Yeah. It's madness. And the other point is, uh, as, as um, other evidence shows, is that when someone dies, if they test positive for coronavirus, then they go on the statistics of having died of coronavirus. Well, as, as the scientists said, that test is meaningless because it cannot establish how much of the virus you have and therefore whether um, it is involved in your fatality or not. So in Italy, according to their national health service, as we would call it in Britain, 99% of people who've died in Italy have had one, two, three or more other health problems which have put tremendous stress on their immune system which cannot cope when something else comes along. Although, we don't know if the truth be told 
whether those people actually died from coronavirus or whether it was from something else, but they just tested positive for coronavirus and therefore that goes on the death certificate. So these figures are being used and are being manipulated to terrify the global population in league with the ludicrous, pathetic, spineless, childish kindergarten media to create a situation in which the most basic freedoms have been deleted. That's what's um, going on. And of course, on our um, website, we've had articles by John Rappaport, who I mentioned earlier has American journalist who looks into this, does a lot of great stuff. And he uh, posted something this week, which we had on the site, in which um, someone had pointed out to him a link to the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC they're called. They're just a, the American uh, um, agency of the World Health Organization, they're all connected. And the CDC establishes the guidelines for how this, a PCR test for whether you got it or not, um, and uh, how it should be done and what the results mean. And this is a paragraph from um, the CDC. Positive test results are indicative of active infection with 2019 NCOV but do not rule out bacterial infection or co-infection with other viruses. The agent detected may not be the definite cause of the disease, but it's going on the death certificate every time. Laboratories within the United States and its territories are required to report all positive results to the appropriate public health authorities. Repeat, the agent detected, the coronavirus in this case, may not be the definite cause of the disease that people have and kills some. Everywhere you look, Gaz, the scam by manipulating figures um, unfolds. You know, they say um, uh, you can't um, argue with um, statistics. Um, statistics speak for themselves. That's what they'll say about this coronavirus. The statistics speak for themselves. Well, I got news for you. Statistics don't speak for themselves. They speak for those that compiled the statistics. And that is how the scam is being played. Wake up, people, while you still can.